At the power supply point of the HMI, 24 VDC power source is provided. Note that the positive and negative terminals of the power source must be connected correctly according to the labels displayed on the HMI. To set the IP address for the HMI, press the network icon button. In this screen, you can configure the network parameters for the HMI. DHCP is the mode for assigning an IP address to the HMI. If this mode is enabled, the HMI will automatically obtain an IP address within the same network layer as the control device. However, in my opinion, to ensure that control devices are within the same network layer, we should not enable the DHCP function. In a specific project, it is advisable to set static IPs for the PLC, HMI, and the computer. So, what does it mean for devices to be in the same network layer? For example, in a project with a PLC, HMI, and computer, to connect these three devices via Ethernet, all three must be in the same network layer. This means that the initial parts of the addresses must be the same, and the last address part will range from 0 to 255 but they must not be the same. For example, here, I set the IP address for the PLC to 192.168.0.1, the computer to 192.168.0.2, and the HMI to 192.168.0.3. Thus, these three devices are now on the same network and can communicate with each other, provided they are connected by network cables. After setting the IP addresses for the devices in the system, go back to the HMI and set the default IP for the HMI. Turn off the DHCP function. By switching off this function, then set the IP address specified in the previous step. The subnet mask should always be set to the default to 55.255.255.0. The default gateway is set to zero. In some cases, if you connect the HMI to the PLC via a router, the subnet mask is the IP address of the router, but usually, it is set to zero. The internet parameter should be left as default and unchanged. You can rename the HMI in the device name section. If there is a red warning, it means the name is not set correctly. When setting the name, it should be in lowercase letters, not uppercase. After setting up the network parameters, press this minimize button to finish the setup process. To be sure, I will unplug the power and restart the HMI. Check the IP address again. Now, the HMI has the IP address 192.168.0.3, which means we have successfully changed the IP address. Now, we will check the connection status between the HMI and the computer. First, Plug the network cable from the HMI into the computer, then on the computer, press the Windows key and R to show the run dialog box. Then type the command NPA, SPPL, and press OK. Now, the network settings screen appears. On this screen, there are many network cards, so you cannot identify which network card is used to connect to the HMI. To check, I unplug the network cable from the computer. The network card that shows a red X is the one. Then immediately plug the network cable back into the computer to reconnect. If the red X disappears, that network card is the one connected to the HMI. Set a static IP address for the network card.
The computer's IP address is 192.168.0.2. and other parameters are set to default. Now, we will check the connection between the HMI and the computer. Open the CMD window. Use the ping command to ping the HMI's IP address the HMI's IP address is 192.168.0.3. Then press Enter. If the result returns with the response time, it means the HMI has successfully connected to the computer. If the result returns a timeout, check the connection again. You can check the network cable, power supply for the HMI, and other possible reasons. After connecting the HMI to the computer, you can download the HMI interface design program from the TIA portal software to the HMI. This is the content of the next lesson.